Uh, hi gamers. So in this video, I'm going to be going over how pretty much everything in my April Fool's video, how to get the 150th coin in GD works. Uh, so this video is interesting because it took about a month to make with a team of like six other people. And as you can see here, there's a lot of fancy stuff going on. So this was all done through modding actually. So I'm basically just going to go step by step through the video and try to explain how pretty much all of it works. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna have to make very clear is that the stats you're seeing over here are obviously hacked. Uh, to make up for that, I disabled the endpoint that lets you sync your stats with the server. So normally when you click your profile button, your stats will sync. Uh, I basically edited the game's EXE so that that just would not work at all. That way I don't have to run into any like banning issues. Believe it or not, I actually did somehow get banned from the GD servers, but only for like two hours, so I'm not sure what happened there. The hardest part of this was that I also had to hack demons, because there's a couple icons here that require you to get a bunch of demons, and in order to get 149 secret coins, you actually have to get like 60-ish demons, I think? There's also this one, which is for map packs, one of these, I remember I had some issues. The only ones I don't have are these ones, which can never be unlocked because they're part of Meltdown, and then this one, which is for rating levels. The stats hack was made by my friend Wiley. You'll probably hear his name a lot throughout the video. Also, you can click this lock. We'll, we'll get to that later. So at the very start of the video, I say that you have to go to GD World just to enter a vault code. Uh, obviously, no, you don't. With that being said, let's go to GD World anyways. This is Nox, which is just an Android emulator that's riddled with ads, much like every other Android emulator. Uh, so, I basically just edited the EXE for the game. I'm not really sure how to describe it without saying EXE. I know it's Android, but it basically uses the same system as if you were to edit the game's EXE. All I did was change one of the dialogues here. So normally, if you type unicorn, it will say, why do they have a horn? But I just changed a couple letters in the game data so that you type, uh, was it destroy? And then it says that. That's literally all there is to it. I just changed a couple of letters <laughs> and then pretended they have to load your data and all that. No, obviously not. All right, so once we're back in Geometry Dash, we can finally get to the first, like, big boy mod of the video. And that would be Scratch in the Basement, which was something that was done by Powered by Pi. He pretty much did all of the interface edits in this video. I'm really happy with how they came out, and I'm so grateful that he was open to helping me with this project. Basically, I just told him on Discord what exactly I wanted, and then he would put it together. So, I actually sent- I actually did the- did the eyes here, because we had to layer these on top of the black gradient. And it, it just took a bunch of find and replacing, but I did it pretty easily, just editing the shopkeeper plist file. Uh, as for the black gradient itself, we were originally going to put legs on Scratch. I was going to get Gyro to do that, but then Chloe stepped in. She's a artist friend of mine, and she made this really cool gradient that you could layer behind the bars, and then if you use multiply blending on it, it makes this really cool darkness effect. Uh, it came out really well, so we ended up just using that instead. Obviously, the Scratch Sprite is just ripped directly from the shop. There's nothing really special about that. And now for the next hack, which comes from Figment, where if you press a button on your keyboard, it'll make a certain dialogue box pop up. So, for example, uh, this one makes the Keymaster rant about Among Us. All the dialogue boxes are extremely customizable, and I gotta say, this, this whole thing came out really well. Uh, the only small nitpick is that when you're in the basement, normally the dialogue box appears up here, but we didn't realize that until after the video was recording. And besides, it's such a small detail that's not even worth dealing with anyways. And in case you're wondering, uh, here's how I type out all the dialogue. It's just in a big JSON file where for each thing I determine the color and the portrait to use, then there's a text. Uh, this D tag D80 means wait 80 milliseconds before continuing. Putting pauses in text boxes is a very underrated effect, and I like using it a lot. Uh, this part is replaced with your username, and the rest of these CL, you've probably seen these before, they're geometry-color tags, and it just determines what color to use. In this case, 
CL is blue, CG is green. Most of them could just be determined by looking at the first letter. So CP is purple, CY, yellow, you get the point. So when I press the one key on my keyboard, you're gonna get the dialogue I set for number one, which is just Scratch talking about an escape. You'll notice I actually use that angry Scratch expression, which is something that's never used in the game. Uh, I almost wasn't gonna put that in the video, but I just thought it would be something really neat, so why not? Oh yeah, and one more thing, uh, if I press the period key on my keyboard while I'm not in the basement, uh, Scratch will change into a coin. The coin doesn't do anything every time you go in there, reappears. And then if I press re period again, uh, Scratch is back, hello. Uh, so now for probably the most obvious trick in the entire video, if you go to Rob Top's profile, uh, you're gonna get this fake profile. Take three seconds to figure out how- wait, what? Oh yeah, sometimes there's some issues with the status messages, no idea why. <laughs> no. Uh, take three seconds to figure out how we did this. It it's just a GD private server. I I'm literally just hooked up to a private server. This was also hosted by Wiley. He did a lot of the more technical stuff in this video. For example, the daily chest later on. Uh, he wrote up everything. He did the icons. Well, I told him what to do for the global rank. Obviously nice. And for what the text should say here. And then he just kind of took it from there. And uh, the dislikes here are actually XOR keys used by the game. For example, when you're like uploading a level. Uh, when you're XR encrypting the data, it actually uses these numbers for it. Uh, I'm not 100% hooked up to the private server, so for example, uh, these are still levels on the GD servers. So I'm kind of connected to both a nor the normal server and a private server at the same time. Because you can change the URLs for some of them, but not everything. It's a bit hard to explain. And then after that, you send a fake support email to RobTop, and then he messages you back. Obviously, I didn't actually email RobTop, I just used Inspect Element and did a bit of fancy editing, nothing too special. But now we're gonna head over to Boomlings. So for this part, I actually have to clear the data for Boomlings every single time, because the referral code button only appears once. Once you refer someone, it disappears. And along with that, you can only enter one referral code per device which means that even if I reset the data or uninstall the app, I'm not gonna be able to enter another code. So to get around that, uh, Wiley made another private server, this time for Boomlings. Yes, we literally made a Boomlings private server for this video where all it does is regardless of what you type here, it'll count as a successful code. So I could just type absolute gibberish, press enter. And apparently this de device has already been registered. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember why. It's because uh, the private server he made has no sound for some reason, so I reinstalled regular Boomlings again, so it's gonna give me this error, and then the button's gonna disappear. But yeah, take my word for it, we hosted a private server so that we'd always get a successful response regardless of what code you type. Although, I'm pretty sure 1770 is an actual code, since much like GD's level IDs, the referral codes for Boomlings just start at zero and count up from one, except they're in hexadecimal, so it goes 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11, 12, and so on. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite parts of the video. You can even see the key <laughs> sliding by on the menu. Perfect timing, because uh, we're gonna get that key when we open the daily chest. See, there it is. And we can open this chest as well, same thing. So how did this part work? Uh, it's as simple as changing two bytes in the game's EXE. Basically, instead of rewarding mana orbs, it just rewards an icon instead, and that icon is then retextured into a demon key. If you look at the video, you'll actually see that I got mana orbs as well. That was a pure coincidence, it's just because if you get a shard in the daily chest when you already have 100 of that shard, it's converted to 100 orbs instead, and that's why you don't get any more shards after 100. That's something you might not have known. I didn't until we messed around with the daily chest, actually. We also did some other messing around, like replacing the orbs with demon keys so that instead of getting uh, 500 orbs, you get 500 keys. So that was pretty funny. Oh, and just going back in time a bit, because I think I forgot to say it, uh, the daily chest was done by Wiley. 
He was the one who figured out how to change the bytes and everything. It was a very interesting discovery, actually. And then after that, Pi implemented it into part of his interface hack, just so I wouldn't have to activate so many different hacks for the video. In this case, there's only two, which is the hack Pi made, which compiles pretty much everything. And then there's the dialog box hack. Uh, if I use the hack to unlock icons, you'll see that uh, there's the key texture. It was one of the meltdown ones. Uh, I had to do a bit of fancy editing. All of the colors for the key are on color two because when you get something in the daily chest, the primary color is gray. So I had to work around that. And then you can see the glow is a little crazy and all that. So once you have that key, you can click this lock to head into Rob Top's lair. And then there's another, there's another dialog. So I press two on the keyboard to let that unfold. And then the next time you press the lock, uh, there's, you don't have to wait for dialog or anything. You can just click it twice. This pop-up will appear asking for a Steam code. Obviously, you can just type whatever you want. It doesn't actually matter. Uh, this was probably the first thing that Pi made, powered by Pi. And at first, we couldn't figure out how to get the placeholder text on the text box working, but eventually we got that. So you submit that. There's a short loading screen. I think it's about one second always. It's obviously hard-coded since nothing's getting sent to the servers. Uh, another message from Shopkeeper, so let's just trigger that. And then on we go into Robtop's lair. So by default, it's completely empty. This is where you're supposed to trigger dialogue. There's a Discord button in the corner. I thought this was very funny, although I, I don't think anyone else does. If I press the enter key, you can make these buttons appear. Obviously, these all do nothing as well. It's just sort of poking fun at the mysteries behind the Elder Mod system. Although I'm pretty sure they just use slash commands in the comments. That's what I hear. Uh, then there's some dialogue from Robtop. That is not the right dialogue. Uh, this here was done by Gyro. He did all the art for Robtop. Uh, he's a very good friend of mine, and he's always open to making like art for shit posts and stuff. Uh, this is a Rhythm Doctor reference. I had to throw that in because I love that game. Oh, and this 2019 joke. That's just trying to imply that this whole secret area has been in the game since update 2.1 was first released many years ago and that it's like long overdue and forgotten about. <laughs> Although I think most people miss that. Uh, if I press, I think, slash on my keyboard, I can just make this pop-up appear. Uh, and then I can make it appear again. And then we can continue the dialogue from there. I love these expressions Gyro made. They came out really nice. And it's supposed to resemble him in like his gym uniform, which is a really good touch. He's also got like that square head and everything. Uh, he made it all in a VC, which is really cool. And yeah, this interface was also made by Powered by Pi. He did, again, pretty much all of the interface stuff. Although I did do the mock-up for this room, I just basically sent him an image of what I want him to what I wanted to look like, and then he did it from there. It came out so nice. I love it. And one fake email from Robtop later. We have this amazing Pokemon ROM hack that Mudstep made. First thing I want to point out immediately is that. I know Mudstep is like the music person, he made my cursed menu loop and everything. He did this entire hack, and I am very impressed by it. It's Pokemon Soul Silver, just for the record. And what really impresses me, I am so grateful for this, he made this entire hack over like three or four days, I think. Then his hard drive broke, and I mean like completely broke. He lost everything just as he was finishing. And then he made the entire hack again in one day, including the music, like right as I was about to completely take this hack out of the video, because I thought it was hopeless, he completely remade it. This is one of the Elite Four rooms, by the way. Uh, I just thought it looked like a good room to use. Uh, so it's just, your party's literally just a Blaziken. It's got a couple funny stats, like uh, it's met at the Vault of Secrets, fresh from the oven. It's just random stuff like that, caught in a Master Ball. And it's level 22, to reference Robtop having access to update 2.2. 79 HP is a coincidence, but you could say it's a reference to Bloodbath or the really hard part of Deadlocked. It's just kind of like a cursed GD number. Uh, so then there's a bit of dialogue from Gengar. As much as I wanted to retexture him, that would have been way too difficult. So it's, it's easier to just change some text and refer to him as the Demon Guardian. With that being said, let's get on with the fight. So this fight took a lot of takes. 
just because I wanted to get really good RNG for the video, and I got very lucky as you saw. I ended up on 1 HP, which I was not planning, but it came out super cool. Also, the Demon Guardian's a girl. That is 100% intentional. I don't know why I thought that would be so funny. It just, it just brings some hilarious implications, even though I say he throughout the whole video. So here are the moves. We have uh, Overheat, which isn't changed. Rage is... I don't remember what attack that actually is, but I think it just deals damage. Although Gengar's a ghost type, so that wouldn't do anything. Postpone is Scary Face. It just lowers speed, which is very helpful in this fight, actually. And then Meltdown is Flamethrower. So let's actually start with Postpone, just because uh, he always... Gengar attacks really quickly, so he might as well get his speed down. Uh, 144 Hertz is mean look, so you can't escape. We couldn't change Gengar's moves entirely, but we could rename them. So we just sort of made do with that. Once his speed is down, let's, you can just use Meltdown, I guess. Overheat insta-kills him, but I want to see if he uses the one move that doesn't appear in the video, mainly just because it always came out terrible. No, he's not. It's, uh... Normally, Gengar has a move called Curse, but it drains your, their HP, so it makes the fight really boring. We just renamed that to Exposal, and it says, like, Chicken is getting cancelled. Uh, something about that's kind of funny. I actually think you could just run from the fight. Oh, no, you can't. Let's see if he uses Exposal. Whatever. Let's just overheat him. And that's the fight. It's very easy. I dragged it on in the video for way longer than I had to to make it look harder than it actually was. And then he'll say, uh, tell him club step, which is the final code, which I only came up with this code very late in planning the video. It was like the last thing I came up with. And so I'm not going to demonstrate it here because you probably saw it in the video. But if you type club step, the game will crash. That was a real crash. In fact, the game crashes simply just from, I think no matter what you type, it's going to crash. But then I have to reload the hacks and everything, so I'm not going to press it. <laughs> After that, uh, I say that the game is going to take you to a black screen. That was edited, actually. It just takes you to the menu, but I cut out the audio. Uh, you will notice there were some mouse movements during that. Oh yeah, my, le my levels were wiped, don't ask why. Uh, there was a lot of save editing and messy stuff for this video. I just made a completely black level and moved my mouse around that. So it's just a pitch black level, background, ground, no BG effect, no line color or anything, hide player, and then I could just wiggle my mouse around to make it look like it's part of GD. Uh, there's also a bit of really slow text. Uh, don't mind the green border, this was black in the video, but I just recolored it back to green because it messes up a bunch of the game's interfaces. I put like a 20 millisecond delay after every single letter, and then I just edited and then I just masked it so it would fit the rest of the black background. Easy, easy. Uh, then I say the game closes again. Head back over to the basement. And, uh, well, you have to press the period key first. And then here's the final coin, which actually does nothing, but no one needs to know that. Uh, just like everything else, this was something that Powered by Pi did. Again, he did all the interfaces from, uh, the stuff in the icon kit to here. Oh, oops, I actually didn't mean to press this. Uh, I might as well point out though uh, that before we had the Rob Top textures, they were just pictures of Mr. Block you as a placeholder. So I kind of made this as a joke. <laughs> just, just pretend it's the $19 Fortnite card guy. Uh, one more thing is that I pretended that when you exit off the basement, you get to see the credits for the game. That was like the one thing in the video that was actually done through video editing. Uh, I just pulled up a PNG of the credits. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I just pulled up this PNG image and then scrolled through it. Uh, here I credit everyone who helped me with the video. So Figment did the dialog boxes, Pi did the interfaces, Wiley did the daily chests and the GDPS stuff. And then Mudstep did the Pokemon ROM hack. And then Gyro and Chloe both did a lot of uh, art for it, which is really helpful. Uh, along with that, I just thought it would be really funny to put Viper in as a community manager and pause in guitar, just because they basically run the whole GD community at this point. Fluke Dude's the creator of the Impossible game. Uh, these are just really old players, like Darnok is basically one of the oldest players in GD history. Same with Cody. And then I think Zaro, Etzer, and Triaxis were just kind of random throwaway ones. Triaxis and Etzer are just really old names from 1.9. Most people probably don't even know them anymore. <laughs> and then music is just all the music for the game. And Kevin McLeod did the shop theme, so I thought I'd put him up there. 
And that's pretty much how I did everything in the video. This was surprisingly shorter than I thought. Uh, in fact, this recording session is half as long as the actual videos was because I kept doing so many retakes. Uh, I can restore my old stats easily. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're more up to date as well. So yeah, uh, long story short, a lot of interface editing went on in this video, just random stuff, mostly getting powered by Pi to make these interfaces. Wiley did some stuff like the daily chest here and uh, the Robtop GDPS. There's also the dialogue boxes, which are tons of fun to mess around with. Seriously, I, I just play around with these to no end. You can even stack them on top of each other. And now I have to click through all of them. <laughs> Anyways, if you have more questions or whatnot, you could always just drop them in the comments and I'll try to answer as many as I can. This was easily one of my favorite projects I've ever done on my YouTube channel. It started with this absolutely crazy vision that I never thought would be possible. And with a ton of teamwork, uh, I am so, so happy with the final result. Uh, I guess we'll just end the video by playing a level as the demon key. I'm gonna turn off glow first. Oh, and I guess while we're at it, I might as well say I didn't actually replace one of the meltdown textures. I just edited the plist file, so it just takes it from a different part of the sprite sheet, which I custom made. That's why the icon is actually bigger than a normal icon, although it doesn't change the hitbox or anything. What does it look like in the ship? I don't think I've ever seen it that way. Okay, that's kind of funny, actually. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, again, just shoot them in the comments. I would be more than happy to answer them. And yeah, take care.